Survivors of child sex abuse are calling on the Catholic Diocese of Sioux Falls to be more transparent about clergy abuse cases. This morning, the group protested in front of St. Joseph's Cathedral in downtown Sioux Falls. Survivors Network of those abused by priests says that the diocese should release 25 more names of clergy accused of abuse. Earlier this year, the diocese named 11 priests with substantiated allegations that the group also says that South Dakota needs to change its laws to allow victims more time to file lawsuits. Now, for Native Americans, many of their court cases were thrown out due to the statute of limitations and the names of their abusers were not released. Those who were abused by Catholic priests, nuns, and even lay people are still wanting for some kind of resolution. Kellyland's Angela Kanicki has brought you the stories of South Dakota's secret past when Native American children were snatched from their families and placed into boarding schools, often abused and in some cases sold. She joins us now with the story of two sisters who stood at the foot of St. Joseph Cathedral in Sioux Falls today, calling for justice to be served. Well, when the Sioux Falls Catholic Diocese released the names of 11 abusive clergy in March, it did not include the names of those who worked in the diocese under a different order. The watchdog group Bishop Accountability has 25 names of clergy accused of abuse for the eastern part of the state. It includes seven nuns and eight brothers who worked on South Dakota Indian reservations. Two sisters say the fact that their abusers are not being named deepens the scars left by years of abuse. Oh, you never, ever get rid of that sense of guilt, that sense of shame, that sense of why did this happen to me? These sisters say they suffered abuse at the hands of priests, nuns, and lay workers at St. Paul's boarding school in Marty during the 50s and 60s. I was forced to perform those despicable acts in order to survive. Amat and Dalin are two of nine Native American sisters who attended the school. We all suffer from PTSD. We all have problems with interpersonal relationships. Some of us uh, sisters had problems with alcoholism. Dalin says this priest, Father Francis Sutmiller, forced her to perform oral sex in the church basement. It was the most scary building on campus because many students were abused or raped in that church. And he'd put, lift me up, he'd put me in a coffin and say, if you say anything, I'll keep you in here. Father Sutmiller is not on the list released by the Sioux Falls Catholic Diocese. He is, however, on the list of bishop accountability. I want no more hiding. I want justice, and I want no more hiding the pedophile. The Sioux Falls Diocese contends it does not have to include the names of credibly accused clergy from different religious orders who were stationed in its territory. The survivors network of those abused by priests or SNAP disagrees. And it's another form of cover up. Every priest, every clergy member kisses the ring of the bishop. They have to have permission of the bishop to serve in the diocese. On the other hand, the Rapid City Catholic Diocese released a list of 21 clergy, which did include those who worked in the diocese, but fell under control of a different order. Most of them worked on the state's Indian reservations. And we're not going to go away. We're going to continue this fight because it's that important that South Dakota recognize what they did. St. Paul's students filed lawsuits against the religious orders, the clergy, and the Sioux Falls Diocese. Now, they made it all the way to the South Dakota Supreme Court, which ruled in 2012 the diocese was not liable for the alleged acts of the clergy and lay people at the school because the diocese did not run the school.